Well, good evening. Uh, my name is Ted Betancourt, Mayor of the City of Peabody. I am the ex officio, and I'll be acting as the hearing officer for today's hearing. Uh, we are at the Wigan Auditorium uh, here at Peabody City Hall, 24 Lowell Street. We are in the uh, downstairs conference room. Uh, today we are here for a public hearing. Today, Wednesday, June 26, 2019, we are being broadcast uh, by Peabody Access Telecommunications. And we're here today regarding an application from RCN Telecom Services of Massachusetts, LLC, for a new cable television license in the city of Peabody. I'll give a brief outline of the public hearing process. Uh, this public hearing is regarding an application submitted through a Form 100 filing by RCN Telecom Services of Massachusetts, LLC, for a new cable television license in the city of Peabody. This hearing is being held to comply with regulations of the Massachusetts Department of Telecommunications and Cable, which require the local issuing authority to assess qualifications of the applicant to be granted a cable license. This assessment is limited to information provided in the Form 100 application on file, any amendments to such application, the issuing authority report, such testimony as given during this hearing, and other relevant information as may be included in the hearing record. Public notice of this hearing was published in accordance with the regulations of the Massachusetts Cable Division and was specifically advertised in the daily evening item. Today's agenda, uh, shortly I'll be turning it over to RCN, uh, their uh, representatives uh, for a presentation, and uh, we'll open it up for any questions or comments from any uh, of the public here today. Uh, and then I'd make some con concluding remarks. I did want to introduce some people who that are here today. First and foremost is our city solicitor, Mike Smirzinski, who has been front and center in, in working through this process, along with uh, attorney Bill Solomon, who was hired by the city of Peabody for assistance during this process and assistance with the negotiations for this license. I wanted to thank and recognize uh, Chris Ryder uh, from City Hall and Mayor's Office and Dan Doucette, our purchasing agent, for their assistance. And a special welcome and a thank you to our members of the Peabody Cable Commission who are here today, uh, Chair Tom Pappas. Uh, we have Kevin Donovan, David Teitelbaum, and Ross Richardson here as well. Uh, thank you, gentlemen, for being here, and thank you for your work uh, d during this process and continuing to advocate for the, the residents. Um, at this point, um, Mr. Smazinski, Attorney Smazinski, I'll turn it over to um, Tom Steele uh, from RCN. Welcome uh, to you. Great to have you here. Uh, this has been a process that started some years ago, and uh, it's great to be here today. And I'll turn it over to you for some comments. Thank you. So my name is uh, Thomas K. Steele, Jr., Vice President and Re Regulatory Counsel for RCN. I've been with RCN since the days they started back in 97, largely doing franchising work. RCN is not only here in, Mass in the Boston area in 19 communities, Peabody would be our 20th, but we also have uh, systems in New York City, uh, in the Pennsylvania area outside of, the, outside of Philadelphia and into Lehigh Valley, Washington, D.C. area, including Montgomery County. We're in Chicago, and we're on the West Coast in the states of uh, Oregon, Washington, and California. So we're a growing company, and we um, have been growing lately. We um, recently got a f received a franchise from uh, Revere and Everett, and we, we built Everett, and we're in the process of finishing Revere. And so we were pleased to work with uh, Peabody, and I too want to thank Mike, uh, Bill Solomon especially, and, and Chris, who I bugged on occasion, uh, for their support. The, the negotiations that we conducted were handled very professionally, and, and I think very effectively for the city. We we will build a, a system. We are going to overbuild, if you will, <clears throat> the existing cable operator, who is, of course, Comcast. And we will be in the community. We'll be in the neighborhoods, be along the streets. Uh, we appreciate it where it's aerial, because it's a lot less expensive than digging. And we will um, we'll get the, prop, the necessary police details and the necessary safety measures will be taken. We'll tell the community when we're coming and what we're going to be doing. Uh, and we um, hope to do it quickly, uh, but it will take some time. So I, you know, I can talk a little bit about what we offered, but everybody is, everybody is like, when are you coming? When are you coming? It's always, what are you coming? What's going to happen? So when are you coming? You know, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I feel like that. Everybody's looking at me like, so okay, that's fine, but when are you coming? Um, what our experience has been uh, in, in is that we have to, the biggest... Um, 
starting point is to get on the polls and to get the make ready done. And so when you do that, you have to deal with the poll owning utilities. Uh, Verizon is one and in, in, in PBD, it's a municipal light plant. The municipal light plant, God bless them, has been wonderful working with us. We look forward to continuing that relationship as we build. Uh, and so that should help expedite the construction. Our experience in um, Everett and Revere, um, we, we were able to uh, start and finish substantially all construction within a year. We essentially, we essentially start in one part of town. We'll tell the mayor where we're going, where we expect to go next. Uh, and then we'll, we'll move, and we move through the town and construct uh, along the way. So, um, and we want to go quickly. I know the mayor wants us to go quickly. The people want to get our services. So if I, if I was pressed, as I am constantly, to give us a time frame, I would, I would say we were, st we're starting. I think even we, we even signed some documents today, I think, with the light plant that uh, clears the way for us to get uh, construction underway. So um, I guess uh, this time next year, we should have uh, substantially all the uh, construction done in the city, which would, I think is a good thing. Uh, and the effects will be felt of competition will be felt right away as we, as we start to gear up and get customers. We we should have customers in early fall, and uh, hopefully we get a, a lot enough customers to keep us viable, and we'll go on from there. Um, I don't know, Mr. Mayor, if you have any questions about that or anything, but we're we're ready to go. Um, and as part of our service, we are with our new construction. We're going to. Um, uh, as part of our network construction, we have a sheath of fiber. We'll dedicate two fibers and two fibers and two fibers point to point from, from municipal buildings and schools within the city for the, an institutional network that the city can use, uh, not only for its video needs to serve for, for video distribution, but also for data needs and, and uh, access to the internet. So it's, a, it's something that we've done in probably now in 14 of our 20 communities, our 19 communities. And it's, it's very reliable because if, that, if, our, if there's an outage or a cut, we're replacing that. We're replacing th that fiber right along with our own. So uh, it's not an eye loop that people might have been familiar with in the past where it's just this cable strung out there in the trees somewhere. So it's, um, we're very proud of that, and, it's, and we've partnered with many a city and town in that regard. Uh, we can do it uh, affordably and effectively because we're doing it while we're constructing. So that's, that's the key. We also are, are proud, with Jim here, to say that we um, have been uh, working with uh, the public access community for a number of years in providing HD channels for local access. Um, I heard people saying that uh, all the access folks said, look, we, we, all the equipment we have is, it does it is HD. We, we, you know, we can't get anything, that we can't replace this old outdated equipment, and yet we can't show HD programming of that type of quality on the cable system. So we compressed and we did our thing, and we're happy to do that from the get-go with, um, with Peabody. So we have three channels, and we, we keep the three SD channels as well, and so we're um, we like to support. And in addition to support access further, we promise to, do, uh, to give 1% of our uh, cable service revenues over the year and support our access or whatever the mayor may think is uh, appropriate for that uh, funding. Uh, we pay a 5% franchise fee, of course, um, and we are um, also, uh, unlike Everett and Revere, we are also doing an, what we call an Ethernet product. That's a, it's a pipe that goes to and from the Internet uh, for the city's use to, um, for high-speed data. Uh, we'll provide that commercial product wherever you would like, and we'll, that should work very much in your favor as well. So uh, it was a good negotiation. It was good for the city. Uh, competition doesn't necessarily mean that the rates are going to drop through the floor by any means. Programming is so expensive. It's much more expensi expensive for us as a company than it is for a company the size of Comcast, but we, we compete as best we can. So we will, you'll see our rates. There'll be promotional rates. There'll be, um, we, we're very proud of our customer service. We do not outsource our customer service. Everyone is here in the United States. We, we're, obviously, we're always increasing our customer service um, uh, potential, and so we are proud of that. And I think that um, the residents of Peabody will see a difference when they call us. Uh, so, uh, the while well, this is a cable franchise, a cable license, if you will, so much of what's happening in the world today revolves around the internet, and so much revolves around the speed 
that you have in your homes and able to, so that your, your, you can have your phone working and your son can have his iPad and your granddaughter can have her, all her equipment going. Everybody's on, everybody's downstreaming movies and watching and doing everything else, Facebooking and everything else. So we, uh, we, we offer a gig service at a very affordable rate to res for residences and uh, that's where you see, I've seen the competition really have effect. It drives, it drives new products, it drives speed, it drives uh, cable uh, products to be, you know, if it's 4K or if it's voice remotes or whatever it is, all that thing, all that's driven uh, much more quickly in a, in, a, in, in a community that has competition. So you can look forward to that. Uh, and just in general, people are frustrated in dealing with a single provider. You have a choice now. You can, if you don't like what you have with Comcast, if you're having a problem with the service, you can turn to us. If you don't like us, you can go back to the, all that, it works. It, it just is a sense of empowerment that people get with competition that doesn't exist when you feel like you're being pushed around by the only provider. Now, I won't even get into com cord cutting because that's not good to say on t <laughs> <laughs> at this time, but it is a competitive marketplace and it's difficult to, uh, for us to, to um, meet every challenge, but we're doing the best we can. So we look forward very much to working with uh, here in the city and at making you our 20th. And I, I don't know, Mr. Mayor, if you want to understand any questions or if you would, if that's enough. Great. No, thank you. Thank you, thank Mr. You. Steele. That was very well said. And uh, certainly I think the announcement recently that um, RCN was uh, coming to the city of Peabody generated a lot of interest, a lot of excitement. Uh, certainly has been uh, much talk uh, among, around the city of Peabody about RCN uh, becoming a part of our city. And uh, certainly it's been a goal of mine, a goal of so many in our city to have competition. And uh, we think competition is the way to go and, and give, as you said, give our residents the ability to, to look at different deals, look at different packages and, and see what would work for them. And um, it's been 40 years since we've had a second provider of, of TV and, and high speed internet. So it's great to, to have RCN a part of the community. I think it's gonna be great for our residents uh, moving forward, so. And I will anticipate one thing, Mr. Mayor, since I have you as a captive audience. Yes. <laughs> one of the things that we've seen as we've done our recent bills in particular is that particularly where there are large developments commonly owned or apartment buildings with landlords, sometimes we're, we are, we can pass that building but we can't get in because the landlord oftentimes doesn't even bother to return our calls or shows any interest. And that leaves those tenants out in the cold. Uh, and so we, we may be turning to your office a little bit for help to push some of these landlords that there's a difficulty in that regard. Not for us, of course, but for those tenants who are being denied choice by uh, not allowing us to access the building. I understand, okay. I understand. So I do, okay, have, um, <laughs> I do have a little summary I did want to read, and you've already touched on, okay. this is a little summary of the, uh, the final now? license. What? Can I sit down now? Oh, please. Okay. <laughs> and then we'll open it up for any uh, thoughts, comments, questions uh, from anybody here today. Um, it is a 10-year license agreement proposed uh, running from June 27, 2019 to June 26, 2029. Uh, the area to be served is the entire city of Peabody. Cable service shall be provided to every dwelling occupied by a person requesting cable service that can be reached by the cable system via a public way or easements in the city over which the city has control and or a private way. Provided that the licensee is able to obtain from owners of private property any necessary easements and or permits in accordance with the applicable law. The drop distance for a standard insula installation is 150 feet for aerial installation and 150 feet for underground installation. Institutional network, the licensee shall construct, licensee being RCN, shall construct, operate, maintain, and repair at its sole cost and expense a minimum of two strand single mode institutional network, INET, for the exclus exclusive use of the city. The issuing authorities designee, including the access provider and or other city users. The INET shall be fully constructed and operational on or before the commencement of cable service on the licensee's cable system. The city shall have the right, subject to certain notice to RCN, to require, to require that RCN pull up to an additional 10 pairs of two-strand single-mode fibers for the INET at the city's cost for the fiber and any termination cost. The INET shall be a star to topology fiber optic network that directly connects, the, connects Peabody City Hall the INET connects 30 municipal and school buildings 
uh, school building properties as well as the access studio of Peabody Access Television, 119 Rhea Foster Street. Peg Access annual support is 5% of the gross annual revenues, which is the maximal, maximum allowed under the Federal Cable Act, which will go to the City of Peabody. Capital support for Peg Access, the licensee RC RCN, shall provide 1% of the licensee's gross annual revenues payable on a quarterly basis for PEG capital costs for public, educational, and or government access facilities. In the event that the issuing authority determines going forward that there is a need for additional capital funding for PEG access facilities, the issuing authority may increase the capital funding amount to of 1% of gross annual revenue to 2% of gross annual revenues. In such event, the cable-related PEG access funding provided in chapters, excuse me, in section 7.1 shall be reduced from 5% of gross annual revenues to 4% of gross annual revenues. PEG access channels, as was mentioned by Mr. Steele, there will be three standard definition PEG access channels and three high definition PEG access channels beyond and in addition to the standard definition PEG access channels. Cable service to public buildings if requested by the issuing authority. Customer service office. Within 12 months of the licensee reaching 2,500 subscribers in the city of Peabody at any time during the first six years of this renewal license, the licensee shall so inform the issuing authority in writing of reaching said milestone. The licensee shall thereafter, within 12 months of reaching said subscriber milestone, commence operating a customer service office in the city of Peabody or in a municipality contiguous to Peabody if the licensee is not otherwise doing so at the time. If the licensee believes that there is good reason why it should not be so required at the time to commence operation of a, com of a customer service office in the city of Peabody, the licensee may submit a request for a waiver of this customer service office requirement to the issuing, issuing authority, including the reasons why in the judgment of the licensee the operation of su such a customer service office is not needed at that time to serve its subscribers. The issuing authority may grant such a waiver in my sole determination after considering the waiver request and the reasons presented therefore by the licensee. The issuing authority shall provide its determination as to any such waiver request to the licensee in writing. The issuing authority's determination shall not be reviewable or appealable. The licensee may seek a similar waiver after it commences operation of a com customer service office pursuant to the above requirement, pursuant to the same waiver standard and process as set out in the initial waiver request, but shall not do so more than once in a year. The customer service office shall, among other things, one, provide sales to potential and existing subscribers, two, receive customer payments, and three, provide for returning and exchanging equipment. Said office shall be open for walk-in business during normal business hours as defined in the license. There is a senior discount, a minimum discount of $5 per month off of the licensee's basic service charge. There are a number of requirements and qualifications for seniors to have access to that discount, uh, and that is also a part of the license agreement. Said discount shall apply to the full level of basic service provided, however, that this discount shall not apply to other discount package prices. Uh, that's just a little overview, uh, some bullet points of the summary of the cable television license agreement. Uh, that has been negotiated and at this time attorney Smizinski, i don't know if there's anything you wanted to add before we went forward to the uh public hearing and allow for any comments or questions i, I think there would be three things just to mention one uh in contrast to the comcast license that's existing uh we're maintaining the the full definition of uh, gross annual revenue which is a good thing for the city of peabody also, uh, as mentioned by uh, Mr. Steele, uh, the light plant has been uh, very much involved with an attachment agreement in terms of negotiations, and quite frankly, we've been given notice that uh, if there is a license um, ultimately agreed upon and executed uh, coming out of this hearing, they uh, have agreed in substance all, to all material terms, and they'll sign that uh, attachment agreement uh, soon thereafter. Um, one you know, major aspect of the RCN license is their commitment to do a, a, a full rehab of, of the INET, which essentially mirrors all the locations and the drops that are in the Comcast license. 
um, uh, you know, it, it, one benefit that we think uh, RCN brings to this uh, community. Um, with that, um, we were able to study the Revere model, and uh, it was very analogous to what we want to accomplish here. Um, with that, um, you, you, you realize that we have an INET that Comcast maintains, and as a result of uh, RCN um, uh, reconstructing a whole new system, we have a buyout agreement uh, with Comcast so that when RCN becomes operational, uh, Comcast will deactivate and there will be an exchange of money so that they don't have to provide that service through the balance of their license. Um, I think the last thing to mention is that um, as a result of the collegiality that was mentioned by Mr. Steele and the mayor in terms of coming to terms uh, uh, for a license with RCN, we were able to obtain two waivers with the uh, Department of Telecommunications and Cable uh, to go basically straight to a final license, which would be the end result of this determination as to uh, the propriety and advisability of inviting RCN to this community. I, I think that covers it. Great. Thank you, Attorney Smizinski. And, and again, this is a, a good day for the city of Peabody. I think our residents and businesses are going to benefit greatly by having competition now in the city of Peabody, again, for the first time in 40 years. And I did want to make special mention, um, Attorney Smizinski mentioned it, but I wanted to uh, make a public thank you to uh, Peabody Municipal Light Plant uh, for their hard work in making this happen, uh, allowing the uh, RCN access to their utility poles uh, in order to make this deal go forward. It uh, wouldn't have been able to happen without their assistance and, and help. I wanted to thank Chuck Ofanos, the executive director, uh, commissioners of the light plant, uh, Bill Aylwood, Tom Paris, Tom D'Amato, Charlie Bonfanti, and Bob Wheatley for their assistance, as well as the city council. This has been a, a team effort uh, to make this happen, and I know, again, that there's a great deal of interest in RCN, and I think this is a good deal for the city moving forward on a number of levels and, and a great benefit to our residents. So I did want to open it up uh, for any comments or thoughts or questions from, from anybody here today. I also do want to recognize John Swanson, a member of our Cable Commission, uh, joining us today. It's great to have a number of the Cable Commissioners here. And John has been a great help in many respects uh, throughout this process. So I'll open it up. If there's any thoughts or comments or questions, uh, please feel free to, to come forward um, to the microphone at this time. Mr. McDonald, please. Good evening. My name is Michael McDonald. I live on Mansfield Street, which is out near Goodwin Circle. And um, speaking only as a customer, uh, I do want to say how interested I am in having someone else other than the incumbent serving the city of Peabody. Um, I'm frankly tired of calling customer service and talking to somebody who I swear was on the phone with me five minutes ago um, telling me that I owed the IRS $10,000 and that they were coming, <laughs> coming for me. <laughs> so I really appreciate that we are finally getting some uh, uh, competition in the city of Peabody. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. McDonald. Anybody else would like to, to come forward and, and speak? Please, the microphone is open. Okay. Well, um, sure, why don't you do that? Yeah, and, and, and this is just a short point. Sorry for having to move the microphone on your jump. Uh, we, we should not recognize Tom Pappas. Tom actually is uh, the chairman of the, uh, the Cable Advisory Commission. He went through the license, provided a, a small spreadsheet of, of uh, observations and corrections, and uh, basically most of them were added into this final license. So uh, we just want to say thank you, Tom. Yeah, thank you, Tom, and to all the board members. Uh, okay, so again, we... Um, Conducted this hearing. Um, I think we can now move forward with closing the public hearing this time and um, uh, move forward with the uh, signing, uh, which I know we will coordinate um, maybe following this meeting. Uh, but again, 
Really excited to have RCN as part of our community. I think this is great, as I said, for our residents, for our businesses. And uh, just competition is, uh, I think, important for all communities to have, um, to be able to, uh, to make the best deal and find the best services that they can. So again, I want to thank RCN for investing and believing in the city. Uh, thank Attorney Smazinski, Attorney Bill Solomon for their hard work and negotiating on our behalf. Um, again, special mention to Chris Ryder, Dan Doucette from City Hall for their work. And again, thank you to our Cable Commission members uh, for their advocacy and, and being a part of making this happen as well. So uh, thank you and please, questions uh, for City Hall uh, regarding this license, please always reach out to the Mayor's Office, 978-538-5700. We will be getting out information uh, that was mentioned earlier um, from Mr. Steele about timing and how this is going to roll out. Uh, certainly there's going to be some time for the build out that's required. We're looking at a year, uh, but we'll be trying to get that information to everybody moving forward. Uh, but this will now conclude the public hearing and we'll move forward with the signing of the license to bring RCN on board as another provider for TV and high speed internet. So with that, we'll call this to a conclusion and uh, thank you very much. Thank you. everyone. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, very happy to be signing this again. Uh, welcome to the Thank city you. of Peabody. It's Thank great you. to have RCN as part of our community. I think it's going to be great benefit to our city, to our residents, to our businesses, to have that cable TV, to have that high-speed internet services for our city and that competition that's so important. So, um. Not to mention the landline telephone. Yes, <laughs> always important. Still very valuable. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thanks very Thank much. You. Welcome to the city Thank of PBD. Thank you. That's great. Okay. Awesome. <laughs>